What's up, little bro? What's happening? What it do, man? It's you, fam. You good? I'm good. How you feeling? Man, I'm good. You know, early morning. You know how we do it. All day, every day. Went into Magic 102's inbox, Faith and Fame with AV. There are walls of the walls group. Went into the inbox this morning. Somebody posted. I've been listening to this single for three straight days. Man. Brand new single, PJ Morton featuring you, Daryl Walls, as a Cordy Cortez. He said three straight days, bro. That made me feel good. That's it's a, good a feel song. good song. Yeah. I was like, you kind of got this island vibe to it, man. Yeah, for sure. That's PJ, man. So PJ, PJ, um, it's a remake of a song that he did for Amber Bullock. Oh, wow. um, back in the day, um, but it's always been a, it's always been dope. But he was like, "Man, I want you." It was originally supposed to be um, us. It was supposed to be me and and like with the Walls Group was supposed to do it. But then due to COVID and stuff like that, it wasn't able to happen. And he was like, "Well, you do it." And I was like, "Me by myself? Yeah. No, give me somebody." And he was like, "You know what? Let me hit Zacardi and see what's up." And we yeah. did it. And of course, Zacardi smashed. And it was good, man. We had a good time, man. We had a good time. It was fun. Y'all both smashed on that song, man. And it was like fun when, to be able to just sing. It was yeah, good. yeah. When you look at the video, it's like you're having a good time. Yeah. You know, I, don't, I don't know if y'all on the island or in the backyard, but y'all yeah. got set up. <laughs> You'll never know. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm liking this. Was this the first time you worked with PJ? Uh, no. So I did um, his piano album last. The last record he did. Um, I sang with him, um, everything will be all right. Yeah. When you think about PJ Morton and just, you know, his gifts and talents and his music ability and his writing, man, when you think about PJ, what are some words that you can use to describe that brother? Because, I mean, this is like his his season, his moment, man. He's rolling. Man, I've been a fan of PJ since I was a kid. So for me, yeah. I would say iconic. I would say genius. I would say... Um, it, the word that comes to mind is longevity because yeah. literally he's been here since the beginning of time for me yeah. and he hasn't gone anywhere it's like even though it's like people are just getting on and like oh my god right. pj 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 but for me it's like man pj been this consistent he's consistent yeah this consistent guy giving us consistent music consistent lyrics consistent melodies consist just consistent creativity for years, yeah, that's my I, I tell people I remember, and you know it, especially here in Houston. Uh, we used to have this thing called March of Faith at St. Agnes Church, yeah. And, uh, Bishop Morton would actually come to St. Agnes and preach, and mm -hmm. PJ was just on the organ playing for him back in the yep. So, this that's is it. how far it goes back. It's like, man, and Jeez. then to see him, you know, from the Maroon Five up until now doing the solo project and then working with artists such as yourself, because I think. And I don't say this just because you're fam to me, but I think, man, you are one of the most underrated solo artists yeah. there is. And I know you've been singing with your family. I've been knowing y'all since y'all were yeah, yeah. knee high to a grasshopper. But man, you can definitely hold your own, Daryl. I appreciate that. That means a lot, man. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. ever think? Do you ever see yourself going solo, man? Um, I, I feel like eventually everything always happens like that so everybody's doing some things everybody has some stuff in the works where um we're branching out doing our own things and having a good time all still all, all while still doing the same thing with one another you know yeah. all, ain't never gonna die but yeah there are some things happening and, and i think it's it's kind of cool to be able to see us do our own thing and have a good time i'm having fun just just doing features yeah. with everybody that i yeah. love and the fact I mean, that people want to want to sing with me is like huh Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. Cool. Yeah, who was some of the who some of the artists that inspired you, man? Especially coming up from a kid, because we're mm -hmm. in Houston, and you know, like I know, in Houston, we're surrounded by so many big name artists. This is great here. Yeah, for me, the first the first person that I heard sing that made me want to sing was Gene Moore Jr. Hey, that's my boy. You know, that's my best that's friend. My guy. <laughs> that's my, that's my my big yeah. brother, man. He's the first person that I saw sing because I was a drummer first. Right. And then I did because I was the guy that was a drum I was a drummer and then I played keys. That was just my thing. Um I always sang, but that's just not the thing that I wanted to do until really? I saw Gene Moore sing and I was like, I wanna do that. Wow. And from there, um 
we went into Mario. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We went into, we went into Brandy. We went into Kimberrell, and then Nat King Cole. And right now, I'm enjoying Ray Charles. Yeah, well, a legend. So those are those are my yeah. vocal, like strong vocal influences. And of course you got, you know, the Clarks and all those you got all right. the church stuff. But who I listened to and studied, that was Gene Moore, Mario, yeah. Kim Burrell, Brandy, and Nat King Cole, and now Ray Charles. Yeah, and That's you know it. when you you know when you hear Gene, you know, Gene's a little bit of uh, Stevie Wonder and yes. Donnie Hathaway. A lot of people don't really understand, but you go back and listen to Donnie. A good mixture of the two. Yeah, Happy marriage. Happy yes, marriage. sir. Yeah, I say it's the perfect man. Let's take us back to the early days because a lot of people don't know you. Your mom sings like crazy. I always tell her she should have had a solo project. She should have been a recording artist. Working on, it. Yeah, working on but, it right now. Yeah, but she was like, nah, I just want to work with the kids. Like the yeah, kids yeah. are my thing. And talk about just the early days of the Walls Group because before everybody saw you all on the big stage, because you're celebrated by, you know, like you said, Brandy, Fantasia. Everybody loves the Walls Group. But talk about the early days and some of the things that you guys did to kind of set yourself up for this moment. Man, the reality for us is that we didn't plan on being here, but um, videos and YouTube, social media was our friend. We yeah. didn't realize, I, we didn't know this, but we were um, deemed like the first, the first like gospel artist to really kind of take social yeah. media by yeah. storm and we didn't know that we were like ah, yeah. we didn't know that but yeah. we are the first ones to do that um we used youtube and we used facebook and we used all the social media platforms yeah. and that was the way we got we got out there and it, it worked because here we are today um but it was not a plan it was not something we sat down and was like we need to find a strategic way to win yeah. we did it it was like this is what's happening i guess this is what's gonna happen and we did yeah. that and we worked hard we didn't know what kind of work we were getting ourselves into until we got into it. It was like, oh, this is this is big boy and big girl stuff, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So we kids just really putting in hours and hours and countless hours of work. I'm talking about yeah. staying up to two or three o'clock in the morning in yeah. our living room, acting like yeah. it's a stage and it's not, but yeah. working hard um, and just really kind of trying to build artists the way that you would watch Motown build artists. My yeah. mom and my dad were doing that with us yeah. all day, every day, because we said this is something that we wanted to do. And yeah. they fought to get us into doors that we probably would have never gotten into. Um, and we just kind of just pushed, pushed, and kind of bogarted our way into it yeah. a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then let the, let Jesus do the rest of the work. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Because the door is open. Like you said, you know, a lot of us were, we were kind of shying away from social media. One, because we really didn't understand it, but your generation was able to embrace it and use it to put yeah. yourself in a position to grow. But talk about, what would you say to artists today, man, who, you know, who may desire to get in into the music industry and how to be able to properly navigate and use these tools known as social media effectively? Um, what I would say is this, what I would say is if you want to do this, make sure this is something you're supposed to do. I always say that make sure it's something that you are really supposed to do because it is, it is a thing for the mental and it is a thing for, for the emotional. So you got to make sure this is something you're really supposed to do. Number two, as it relates to social media, make sure that you use everything you can use, use, use it to the best of your ability. You got to engage. You got to make sure that you're very strategic in how, what you post, how you post it what you're doing mm -hmm. let people know that you're serious about it and everything that you post don't just post don't have behind it you know what i'm saying if you're gonna right. post something make sure whatever you post <laughs> is amazing whatever you post yeah. is great so that when people see it when it starts circulating it's like whoa and then also make sure that what you post you can do yeah <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. you know and that's yeah. something that's important but also just manage manage your platform very well um, my mom always says, keep your name clean. Right. And um, making sure that whatever you do, however you, you present yourself, it is with the utmost respect and, 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 and just be amazing in everything you do. That's yeah. it. And y'all always been doing that. We're talking about, if you're just joining us, PJ Morton's getting ready to release the Gospel According to PJ album. Yes. It's going to come out on the 28th. But the brand new single, we're featuring it here on 102 is so in love with Daryl Walls and, of course, the Cordy Cortez. And for those that's just joining us now, tell us how this all came about, you guys being a part of this single. 
So um, me, uh, PJ hit us. He hit me. He was like, man, I want you to do this. I'm doing this gospel album. I need it to be done in like a week. We were like, what? Like, what are you yeah. saying? <laughs> PJ literally does records in like two to three weeks. I love it. Record. So he I was like, man, it. I got to get it done. So can y'all get in there and do it? And I was like, uh, yeah, let me see what I can do. And COVID was a thing. So we kind of had to make some difference. So I went by myself. I laid the BGVs and I did the verses by myself. And I was like, man, I can't do this by myself. You got to yeah. have somebody. And he was like, let me, let me hit Zicardi. He hit Zicardi. Yeah. Zicardi's like, I'll be there in like 30 minutes. And I was like, yeah. oh, cool. So Zicardi yeah. came, smashed his verse, and here we are today. It became what it was. Me and Zicardi have never sung together before. So uh, yeah, I know. Like, it's amazing. Uh, first for me. So I was honored. You know, I grew up on a Cortez kid, so this is right. kind of cool to be like, I got PJ Morton and Zicardi Cortez. This is a dream for me. So this is yeah. good. It was dope. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm sure because he. I'm gonna talk with him right after I finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I'm sure he's probably sitting there listening and watching now. Like he grew up on me. Like what? What? You know? I, we grew up. The first song we learned as a group was the Cortez yeah. uh, medley, the Come Along and yeah. the Glory, Glory. That was them. That ain't us. Yeah. That's the yeah. Cortez family. Yeah. So it was an honor for me to finally get a chance to sing with Zacardi Cortez and have fun doing it, man. It was. Yeah. Man, when you think about, I want to roll back to something you said earlier. When you have artists like Fantasia, Brandy, uh, even Yolanda Adams, some of the great artists who say, I love this group. Yeah. I'm inspired by this group. I'm blessed by their music. And when you hear people on that statue, because you've been watching them for years, and they're yeah. all of a sudden fans of you. What was that moment like for y'all, man? It's dumb. I, because <laughs> it don't really it doesn't really make sense you know what i'm saying yeah. but but what it what it says is to me from what it does for me is it kind of makes me realize that yo you put in a lot of work yeah to, to i guess to basically hone this craft that you have mm -hmm. and sometimes we we don't see that we We've done it. We always, we're our worst critics, we're our, we right. always try to find something wrong with how we've done something, how we've made something. If, if the record was dope enough, if our vocals are dope enough. And here comes people who you love and who mm -hmm. you look up to or who you say, say, oh my God, you're amazing. Yeah. Oh my God, you're dope. Like Brandy, who will text me out of nowhere and be like, yeah. your voice heals me. And I'm yeah. like, huh? What the like, what? Are you talking about? <laughs> what? But it's, it says to me that yo, the work that you have put into you, it yeah. was worth it. So don't stop because yeah. the, it, even the days you feel like you don't want to do this no more because it don't look the way you feel like it should look, whatever the case may be. Right. There are people who are looking at you that you would never think of looking at you. Yeah. So just don't worry about all that. Just just, just keep yeah. going, keep pushing because somebody is looking at you and they oh, look. Yeah. It's yeah, insane to me. Yeah, it's a, it's amazing, man. I don't think I'll ever get yeah. used to it though. I don't yeah. think I'll because it's still weird because people are still coming out of nowhere. Like, yeah, I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah. Because if they see you in the crowd, you know what they're doing. There, right? Come on up here. Yeah, there. Come sing this no. because they appreciate the gift, you know. And I've seen it. I've been in concerts, yeah. you know, sitting in the crowd. I think the last time I saw you, we were probably at Pastor Dixon's church. Uh, yeah, and uh, his daughter, I think, and they were doing an event, and you were in the crowd. Just I'm sitting in the back, and next thing I know, they like this Daryl, come on up, and you just go right up on the stage and do what you do. <sighs> you know, I'm trying not to. I'm trying. I'm trying to learn how to say no. Yeah. Well, good luck, hey Daryl. Good luck. Good luck with that. Good luck. I've been trying to work on that since like '97. Like, like no, no, yeah, no, no, yeah, I'm not gonna yeah. come up there. Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm gonna give you a little bit. I'm just just give you a little bit. Man, how do you guys avoid, especially being the group? How do you avoid competition or is there such thing as healthy competition? You know, sometimes because the spotlight, man, you know, it can be addictive as we know, but how do you guys avoid competition because y'all work so well together as the, as the walls group? Competition between each other? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, it's different because we're family. I think when you, you, I know you have sibling rivalry and stuff like that. But right. I think when you are, are fans of the people that you work with is completely different. I'm okay. I am a fan of every one of my siblings. Like yeah. Aja is amazing. Paco is dope and yeah. Ray is dope. But here's the thing, I think that neither one of us is the same. 
so there there can't be like a competition because it's like y'all we are all in our own lane and right. we're all we all make up this thing so it's like even if you get in love today and I'm not that's good because yeah. I want people to see what I see in you and if yeah. you get in love today I want them to see what, what I see in you and if I'm getting love today I we want them to see what we see like so it's it's more so like if you win, we all win. So yeah. like, we're, we're good. We're, everybody's yeah. good. So that's yeah. what I love. Even with this, because they wanted to do it, but they couldn't. Right. They were like, win, though, because you smashed yeah. it. Like, yeah, this is good. This is good. <laughs> so it's like, this makes you feel good. Yeah. Yeah, man. And I love it. Like I said, the new single with PJ Morton, So In Love, is good. I saw We saw Lil Bro last night. It's, it's been trending this morning with Paco, uh, trending about some comments that he made about uh, the situation you know, with, with gospel artist Kirk Franklin and just the label. And a lot of times, you know, social media, man, can be so cruel because, yeah. you know, I understand he's a young man. He, he's going to express himself and he has the right to do so. Yeah. You know, when you see stuff like that and just how people sometimes come at your family, how do you mm -hmm. handle that? Because social media can be so cruel. You know, man, I've, I used to, when I was younger, I used to get mad and I used to be like, you know what? Let me defend and let me tell y'all what y'all got to tell y'all. But what yeah. I've learned over time is that people do what they want to do and people think what they want to think and they say what they want to say. And you have to be okay with the fact that whatever you say or whatever you put out, people have the right to respond. That's right. number one. And number two, whoever you are, people don't know it, but you have to make sure that you stay consistent and who you are and make sure that you don't take on what people think and what people are saying because if you do then it goes downhill from there so i've just learned to, to just kind of just be like cool but i'm yeah. going to consistently be who yeah. i am because who i am is always going to shine through rather than it doesn't matter what you pinpoint but right who i am and what i what i have to offer and what i give is always going to shine through no matter what so I yeah. just kind of let I let I let people do what they what they're gonna do. If people are gonna love you, they're gonna hate you. They're gonna yeah. like you. They're gonna not like you. Regardless, there's an assignment, and that's right. the, that's the purpose, and that's what we have to work on. That's what we have to focus on. Yeah, and I, a lot of times, you know, people want us to be perfected, and what I mean by uh, perfect or perfected is they want us to be matured when they meet us, and a mm -hmm. lot of times we're not at that mature level. And people don't mm -hmm. give us enough room to grow. Yeah. I think back. I think back a lot of times when I was his age or even younger. If you would have caught me at the right moment mm -hmm. in my frustration, you you would be surprised and say, "Is that Av saying that?" Yeah. And I'd be like, "Yeah, that was me." Yeah. And I, I think. And I, I think. And I yeah. Every and word. I, I, I agree with you, man. I think <laughs> yeah. what people don't realize is that I'm older than my siblings. Right. So I'm. I'm 30, so yeah. they're not. They're just getting into yeah. their 20s, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but what they don't realize is that they've had to grow up in this place. Right. They didn't get a chance to grow up, then come. You understand yeah. what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. They, they, grew, they literally lived in their the lives yeah. here. So yeah. while he's trying to figure out what a man is for himself and what that looks like and what he wants to do and where, where God is taking him or whatever his journey is, it's, it kind of sucks that he has to do it in front of people. Right. But, yeah, people don't give you the grace to grow. No. They don't give no. you the grace to become. They yeah. just want you to be. They want you yeah. to be there already. But what they don't understand is that you're at home growing, too, every yeah. day. Yeah, Doesn't matter man. what age you are, we're always in a season. We're always in a transition, always progressing, yeah. always moving forward. So I think that once we operate from the lens of grace, compassion, and understanding, We'll it all be better, but that's a perfect world. So yeah, yeah it's like, but and we're not. But if we kind of got to that place where we start yeah. to understand that we operate from the place of grace, because we are always receiving grace and compassion and understanding on a daily basis, a uh, secondly basis, um, from God every day, uh, we have to learn how to mirror that image and do the same with people who we yeah, don't man. really know, no. um, and try to allow them the space to grow because you don't know what this moment will do for him or for right. them because yeah. next month or in a year from now he'll look back yeah. and be like wow yeah wow yeah you know what i'm saying yeah so, yeah yeah because yeah. i tell him I said, like i said man we didn't have this social media platform we didn't grow up in that mm -hmm. a lot of things that we just dealt with in our own situation a confrontation how we dealt with it we dealt with it in that moment we didn't move on but if we had these cameras 
social media. True. We had this platform. True. You would look at a lot of us differently. Completely. You know, back then, yeah. Listen. So we were hot headed. Like we go to the church and try to handle some stuff compared to just, hey, ex I'd rather Listen. express it on social media than you go and have an all out fight. Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, just Truly. do it here. It's easier. Truly. If, you Listen. know, you. You know your daddy like I know your daddy. And if, uh, listen, if it was going down, we were going to get it over with right then and there. Okay. That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah, but the people don't know that because social media yeah. was dead back then. Yes, but sir. you know what <laughs> we, hey, we know God's grace. God is God is kind to us. We thank yeah. you for yeah. mercy. Yeah. And, and we, know, we know the business can be ugly. Yeah, man. We, we yeah. learn a lot about it. I mean, when we get in it, it's one of the things we say. Somebody said church fight in the streets. Yeah. Man. And I'm not, listen, I'm not encouraging fighting. I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> we, we had to grow and mature. We had to, just, you know, we had to grow up in, in, in grace and grow up in God and learn some things and handle things differently. But when it comes to the music industry, and especially the business side of it, talk about that, man. Just how important it is to make sure that you become a student of the industry and not just an artist. Yeah, make sure you become a student and not just an artist, but also not um, <laughs> some someone who's bitter, man, because yeah. it's easy to become those things in, 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 in this industry because it can be very, very cruel and it can be very, very, you know, hard on the mental and on the, that's why right. I say, make sure this is something you're yeah. supposed to do because yeah. even the ones who are supposed to be here are they're fighting for their mental sanity every day you know what i'm saying so it's important to know business it's important to know contractually what's going on it's important to know what you have rights to as an artist it's important yes, to know sir. what you have rights to as a songwriter and producer um as a vocal producer even it's important to know what you have and know your worth because if you do not it will eat you up and spit you out like it was nothing and I feel like a lot of times we see, we watch Unsung, or we yeah. hear stories. Yeah. We think that people are supposed to have all this money and they're like, nah, I'm, I don't have nothing because I'm broke. Yeah. you realize that we're signing contracts and we're doing things just because we think that when you sign to this person or you sign to this label, that this is what's yeah. going to happen. But you don't realize that nah. there are things and stipulations in these contracts that literally yeah. make you you're basically owing a bank for the rest of your life if you're not right. careful. That's basically yep. what you did. You're taking out an interest loan that, that has an interest rate that you yeah. will just, you'd be like, what the heck? Man, yeah, paying back understand. for a long time. Yeah. And it keeps going, yeah. it keeps going, and it keeps going, and it keeps going yeah. if you're not careful. So what, I'm lear what I've learned is to know and make sure that before you do anything with anybody, you make sure that you have the right people in place to make sure that you are protected right. and that everybody wins. Yeah. If that doesn't work or if that's not happening, then you need to talk to, you need to let that go or talk to somebody to help you out. Make sure you don't just go. Yeah. I don't care how amazing you are. I don't care how great you are. I don't care what they say to you. I don't care what they promise you with their mouth. You have to take people for who they are. And nine times out of 10, you don't know who they are. So you can't no, take no. them for nothing. So no. what you need to do is you need to say, all right, Thank you for believing in me. I appreciate you. Yeah. But at the same time, let's make sure this business is handled yeah. correctly. Yeah. Because I don't want to have to feel like I go back to who I used to be and blow yeah. up your house and shoot your car up. <laughs> and then, then, you know, I don't want to do that. Yeah. So let yeah. everybody be copacetic and, and we do it the right way. I don't have to pray about it um, and pray God to get me out of it if I do yeah. it, use wisdom in the beginning. You know In the saying? beginning. Yeah, so, wisdom is it's the principal thing. Yeah. So we, we got to make sure we do that. Listen, little bro, man, I appreciate you. And uh, we're definitely going to have to come back on and, and, and continue this conversation. Love but you, listen, man. everybody, 102 today, Magic 102, we're playing the brand new single, So In Love, uh, featuring Daryl Walls and Jordan Cortez as we get ready for the Gospel According to PJ's album to drop on the 28th of this month. And uh, that was Candy Eastman rolling by. Yo. Appreciate that, Candy. She, she kind of kicked my chair at church. I almost went back there. I almost, I, I almost <laughs> slipped. <laughs> I almost slipped. Like, what? Come on, right. say hi. I'm sorry. Hi. Hey. Sorry. Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. yeah, appreciate you. Yeah. You good? See you good. All right, see you good. Appreciate you, little bro. Now, when is the new music coming out, man? When we going to get some new music from you? Just, 
came back from LA from recording our new single called Stand Still, man. And I cannot wait for people to hear that. I wrote that. Um, Tyrone Bell and Warren Campbell produced it with me. And it's going to be incredible. It has this old 80s, 70s Clark Sisters feel, man. Um, yeah. I can't with. wait for people to hear it, man. It's gonna be it's gonna be insane. So hopefully before the end of the year is out, y'all will have something to hear and like at the same time. Yeah. And then Magic 102 gonna play it. And we can I'm gonna say all I'm gonna say is bring it home first. Bring That's it. all you already know what you it see is. What, you see what I'm saying? Listen, bring it home first. You already That's know all Houston saying. first. All yeah, day. Bring it home. Love you, little bro. Appreciate Love you, man. man. Peace out. All right. Peace out.